This informational video is brought to you by the Citizens Against Lake Erie Wind Turbines. We are a group of concerned local residents who want to protect Pigeon Bay from industrial wind development. It is our hope that the information we are providing raises awareness of the possible devastating impact on this vital and environmentally significant bay. Pigeon Bay is situated on the north shore of the western basin of Lake Erie. It is Canada's south. The communities of Kingsville, Leamington, Pelee Island, and Point Pelee National Park are on its shores. Kingsville's connection to Pigeon Bay is substantial. There is an active lake freighter and commercial fishing industry. International transportation with the Pelee Islander and Jimon Ferry Services for Pelee Island as well as Sandusky, Ohio. Jack Miner's Bird Sanctuary is a long established destination for migrating waterfowl. Cedar Creek is a private marina for recreational boaters and for fishing charter businesses. The potable water intake for over 55,000 homes and businesses in Kingsville, Leamington, Lakeshore and Essex is located at Union in the municipality of Kingsville. The Leamington Municipality Marina is a 335 dock facility. It is a renowned destination for boaters from Ohio, Michigan and Ontario. It is a centerpiece of Leamington's waterfront development plan. Leamington shares the Pelee Island Sandusky Marine Transportation with Kingsville. Sturgeon Creek is the home of two private marinas and commercial fishing interests. Point Pelee National Park closes Pigeon Bay to the east. It is known throughout the world as a focal point for spring and fall bird and butterfly migration. It is an internationally designated wetland site and dark sky preserve. Pelee Island is a community very much dependent on its Pigeon Bay connection regular ferry service to Kingsville and Leamington is the economic lifeline for the island. Fishing and pleasure boaters utilize the West Dock and Scudder. Birding tourism, wine tours and cottagers are the major contributors to the island's economy. These individual turbines are enormous. They rise over 400 feet above the water surface, three times, in fact, the height of our very own familiar tomato tower. First introduced in 2006, three sites in Pigeon Bay were identified for industrial wind development by South Point Wind. A total of 119 turbines, Kingsville with 36 sites, Union with 24, and Leamington with 59. After an overwhelming protest by area residents in the fall of 2006, this offshore project site was placed under a moratorium for industrial wind development by the Ontario Liberal government. In 2008, the moratorium was lifted. 
South Point Wind reintroduced the project proposal. It states that the initial number of turbines is for five in each of the three sites in Pigeon Bay. This 9.99 megawatt designed output per site is a threshold for the proponent-driven environmental screening process. Here is an overview of some of the potential conflicts with any wind development in Pigeon Bay. Both the Mississippi Flyway and Atlantic Flyway converge over our bay. This instinctual path has developed over centuries. Millions of songbirds, waterfowl, migratory bats, monarch butterflies, and dragonflies pass through this corridor spring and fall. Renowned destinations like Jack Miners, Hillman Marsh, and Point Pelee have been long-time safe havens for these migrating species. At a time of the many environmental pressures on these creatures, is this the proper location for an industrial wind development? Pigeon Bay was named by early settlers because of the millions of migrating passenger pigeons that would blacken the sky for days as they passed through this route. It was man's intervention that brought this species to extinction. Would these turbine installations contribute to the demise of others? The placement of these turbines in the bay conflicts with established ferry routes, even in ideal conditions. Will adverse winds or mechanical failures with the ferries result in collisions with the turbine bases? Lake freighters use Pigeon Bay as a shelter from adverse winds or storms. When travel up the Detroit River is hampered by this type of weather, upbound freighter traffic anchors in the bay. Depending on the extent of this turbine development, this shelter may not prove to be a safe option for these freighters. Not only are the wind development areas in designated fishing grounds, they also have the potential to destroy existing features on the Pigeon Bay floor. These muddy, grassy areas have historically been the feeding grounds for young pickerel and perch populations. Fishery experts refer to Pigeon Bay as the nursery for these fish stocks. The effect of the lake current as it strikes the multiple turbine bases could create a scouring effect in areas east of these obstructions. Could the loss of these areas have a detrimental effect on fish populations? Would the placement of the foreign rock blanket at each base be a spawning ground for other species that compete for the native fish food sources? Other unknown impacts on the fish populations are the electromagnetic fields that may result from an industrial wind development, vibrations and noise, both during the construction and after commissioning. The Union Water System Manager has expressed concerns relating to the possible contamination of the raw water that is used for the plant. There will be a disruption of the lake bed sediment containing heavy metals and toxins during the construction. The possible fracturing of the bedrock that is known to encase natural gas deposits or exposing the lake to the sulfur aquifer also has the potential to temporarily or permanently contaminate the raw water supply. The Mono Pile Foundation System proposed for this installation involves the pounding of the steel casing of the turbine base through the silt and clay lake bed and into the bedrock to a depth to support the design wind load. The silt and debris are pumped out of the casing once above the water surface and replaced with concrete. This sediment has been layered with decades of Great Lake pollution. This water quality issue may be one of the harder questions to answer. Point Pelee attracts some 275,000 visitors annually. Figures available from 2004 estimate the economic benefit to Essex County at between 12 and 14 million dollars for birding tourism alone. Along with birding, recreational boating, and fishing bringing tourists to this area, scuba diving may also be affected by this industrial wind development. Studies have shown that there are more than 250 shipwrecks located on the Canadian side of Pelee Passage. Divers fear the destruction of artifacts during turbine construction. Birders fear massive bird, bat, and butterfly kills once they are commissioned. 
the recreational sail and power boat traffic on Pigeon Bay, typically traveling between Leamington or Kingsville to either Pelee Island or Ohio, will have to pass through the proposed wind turbine site areas. Though daytime trips should not pose collision issues, night navigation with the numerous bases could prove to be dangerous. Navigation lighting would have to be installed on each base, which may pose its own risk. The release of the preliminary findings of the Baird Report for the Essex Region Conservation Authority and Parks Canada concluded that the man-made obstructions constructed along the shore from Kingsville to Point Pelee are the main reasons for the loss of sand required to maintain the tip of the point and the sandy shoreline. What will be the impact of multiple turbine bases? Sand and sediment carried in water flowing downstream could be deposited at the turbine bases, similar to the placement of a snow fence. The more bases there are, the greater the potential problem. There are many documented health concerns relating to industrial wind development. Flicker effect and noise are contentious issues with land-based turbines. Our concerns are related to the amplification of these problems with water-based installations. With the additional navigation lighting on the turbine bases, as well as a conventional mid-base and top lighting reflecting off of the lake surface, the flashing of this maze of light could have greater negative effects on susceptible people. Noise, both audible and inaudible, from the turbines at certain wind speeds is also a concern. Sound travels three times further over water, and it is shown that a multiple turbine installation increases the intensity of that noise. This proposal has turbines within a kilometer from shore. Our group supports our government's initiatives towards more sustainable energy generation. Both Kingsville and Leamington have approved or are in the process of approving many land-based wind projects. In Ontario, we know that there have been no industrial wind developments that have had to go through a full environmental assessment. This is our concern. There are so many unknown impacts of this Pigeon Bay wind development relating to the health and livelihood of the people of Essex County and the numerous and diverse species that depend on these waters. On many of these issues, there would be no way to know what the real impacts are until the turbines are constructed. It is not a risk that we want to take, nor should we. There have to be areas that are out of bounds. We are the stewards of this bay for our lifetime. Our local political representation is unanimous in the opposition to this Pigeon Bay development. This opposition comes from the councils of Leamington, Kingsville and Pelee Island, Liberal MPPs Bruce Crozier and Pat Hoy, and Conservative MP Dave Van Kestren. They know how vital the bay is to this area. It is our united task to convince the decision makers of it. We end with this question. Can the anticipated benefits of any wind project in Pigeon Bay be worth the risk of the potential damage to the bay and the communities that depend on it? Our detailed research for this video is available through our group and we can be contacted through our website www.lakeeriewindturbines.com Thank you.